Hello my friends and welcome once again to my painting channel and in this video we are going to be painting Cassian Andor and this is a fantastic little model that has been sent to me by one of my subscribers by Adam Moore so thank you so much my friend for sending this into the channel and let's see if we can paint this up and get this character to look just as we want him so we're going to start as always with the skin and for this one I'm going to use a Citadel recipe so we're going to start off by using a nice thin layer of Kislev flesh and we're going to cover all of the face all of the skin area on this character these uh, or this little model from the um, Star Wars Legion game uh, it just has so much amazing detail and so much amazing character we're really gonna pick out those details and bring this whole thing to life in a few very very easy steps it's gonna be a great video and we're gonna get loads and loads of character out of this so just gonna paint around the neck and just around the face area just to make sure that we've got all of that nice base tone and base color around the face and once that's done I'm gonna to switch to a black um, normally I would use something like a tenebrous gray uh, but either one would work perfectly fine so you can use black or you could use like a little bit of an off uh, black color so a very very dark sort of gray color and that's all I'm gonna do here is just paint across his hair so just cutting across the top here just trying to pick out those strands that go across uh, the top part of his forehead and I'm also gonna to try to pick out the beard as well while we here so this is a very difficult uh, part of the model to do just down and around the sort of goatee beard and just around the mouth area so take your time with it and the reason why I'm doing it at this stage is because if there are any mistakes at this stage it is very easy to go back and just repaint a little bit of the skin so doing it at this stage is very good um, and a really great way of making sure that we get that character and that detail uh, but without um, sort of making too many mistakes or worrying too much about it later on when it's more difficult to fix so as you can see I'm just using the very 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 tip of the brush just to try to dab and pick out uh, sort of the area where this is going to be I'm not too worried about brush strokes because again this is supposed to be beard and hair and things like that so you kind of want a few little brush strokes to add a little bit of character and a little bit of texture and kind of like hair like looking uh, effects to it so don't worry too much about those brush strokes that's all part of the process now once that's done, instead of using a flash wash, for this one I'm going to use a light tone. And the light tone is a very, very light sort of orange, uh, brown sort of colour. And we're using this just to kind of get a little bit of a difference because the... Um, the sort of flesh wash has a sort of uh, warm warm tone to it so instead of using the flesh wash for this one I'm just going to pick out um, that uh, sort of color definition and that sort of um, skin tone by using this light tone instead now from there then we're going to go back to the Kislev flesh once all of that is dry and we're going to pick out those details on the face so the nose the forehead uh, the cheekbones and all of these different things and as you can see just using the very tip of the brush again so this is my side is five and a half um, and this is just picking out the very 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 sort of edges of those cheekbones just like so you can see I'm just trying to be as careful as possible not to get this on uh, sort of the areas that we painted and again just picking out parts of the neck area here as well we go um, using this nice thin down paint we can pick this out in sort of layers so the good thing is we're not just placing one big thick blob um, of thick thick paint onto the model we're building this up in stages and in layers so as you can see I'm doing two layers of this sort of Kislev flesh just trying to build that tone back up here then once that's done, we're going to mix a Kislev flesh and a flayed one flesh. So again, sticking with the Citadel color tones. I like to mix and match a few different color tones and a few different ways of painting skin in the channel, just so that it makes you guys a little bit more comfortable with painting skin and gives you a lot of different choices of how to paint skin as well, because there's so many different recipes and textures and styles of painting skin. So I like to mix and match as I paint so that it gives you guys a little bit of a nice mix of uh, sort of how to paint different types of skin. So with that, once we've mixed these two together, so just using roughly half and half, so just one blob of each really, and then I'm just gonna go back and do the same thing. So we're picking out the nose, the forehead, the cheeks, and you can be a little bit more um, sort of specific about where you want this color to be so that this just picks out uh, slightly more highlighted areas. And again, with it being nice and thin, it gives us the opportunity and the option of building up in layers. So you're not stuck just putting one blob on and being done gives you the opportunity to build those layers up. 
Now once that's done, we're gonna use the flayed one flesh on its own. And again, just placing a little bit of water with this and mixing this on my palette here. And then just wiping off the excess across the side of my palette. And then again, just being very careful about where I place this one because this is more of the extreme highlight. So this is just where I'm picking out bits of the forehead, the nose, and again, just the, the, the major highlighted cheekbone area, just like so. And the good thing by using these thin down paints is they will blend and blur into each other quite nicely. So you do get this really nice sort of blended texture. Um, it becomes a lot more natural, a lot more neutral, and it looks really, really nice when it's done. Once that's done then, I'm gonna use a dark blue gray from Vallejo. And again, just mixing this together in my palette, um, just wiping off some of the excess. And what I'm gonna to try to do using the tip of the brush is just try to pick out some of those um, edges and some of those bits of hair, some of those strands of hair, just sticking at the front. Because he's got very, very dark hair, we don't want it to just be flat black. We kind of want a little bit of texture in there. So that's the reason why I'm using this, is just to pick out a little bit of texture, a little bit of tone, as if the light is sort of catching in bits of his hair as well. So that it kind of creates a little bit more um, contrast to the model rather than it just being one flat dark black color um, because you kind of want to have something that just catches your eye on the table um, and just makes the model look really really uh, cool and sort of well painted just like so and as you can see i'm almost kind of just dry brushing a few of the added uh, parts of hair just across uh, the back area here so once that's done, that's the hair and the face. So we're gonna go onto a dark Prussian blue, and this is a really nice dark, dark blue color. And we're just gonna place a little bit of this into our uh, palette, just like so. And then we're just gonna cover all of this across Cassian Andor's jacket. So we're gonna paint all of the coat in this color. So this is a nice dark blue color, but it does have a really nice vibrant tone to it as well. Again, this will take sort of two layers, two textures um, of this tone, but you can really see that blue. So this is really gonna pull that blue together. If we're using this as our base color, uh, the blues that we're gonna pick out later are really gonna stand off and really gonna pop on this model. So we're gonna cover the the whole jacket in this and then what we're going to try to do is tone it right down and then build it back up so this gives us the option of picking out where the highlights are and choosing where the light source will be and all things like that it's just trying to be as careful as possible not to get this all over different parts of the model i mean it doesn't matter at this stage again like i said earlier because we can fix areas uh, while we're doing sort of the base parts so you don't have to be overly cautious or too careful as we go we're just trying to make sure that these nice thin layers will dry down um, nice and evenly so that we don't have areas where we are losing sort of detail on the model so once that's done then, as I said, we're gonna darken this right down. So we're gonna use a null oil shade. So this is just a black wash color. This is from Citadel. Um, you can use any sort of black wash that you're comfortable with. I'm just gonna use the null oil because this is something that I know a lot of people use. It's readily available um, and it is a go-to favorite for the masses. A lot of people like to use the null oil and it does have a really good property of sitting just in those recessed points. So as you can see, when we paint this in, this is sitting in all of those creases um, and darkening the model down nicely but then it's given us a really good base platform that we can build back up from as well and that's exactly what we're looking for here so we don't want to overdo it and we don't want to darken it down so that it becomes black or anything like that but just giving us this tone and this extra sort of darkness will give us the ability to build back up so we're gonna go back to the dark Prussian blue, so the color that we started with, and then we're just gonna to start to pick these uh, layers, these sort of um, creases and folds out. You can really see now that by using that null oil, this has darkened the model to the point where it's given us all these little dark bits in those creases and in those folds, and that's fantastic. That's exactly what we want. We want to be able to build those colors and tones back up in this coat. And you can see now just by painting the base color back in, that we're really starting to get a lot of that texture and tone back out of the miniature. And it's given us this really nice deep sort of effect, this really nice contrast to the model as well. So again, I'm just picking out bits using the very tip of my brush. And that's all I'm doing is just picking bits out of my wet palette just to the side and just wiping off the excess of the brush just on the side of the palette. This is why my palette looks so uh, sort of well-worn and, and grubby is because it's it's very well used and uh, and i like to uh, to wipe off the excess just on the side there i find that to be very very useful as well 
and as you can see just picking out all of those folds the cool thing by using a wash on a model like this is because when it sits in those recess points and it sits into all of those uh, sort of folds and sort of um, folded areas it gives us the opportunity then uh, to really see where all of those uh, sort of higher up uh, folds are it gives us the opportunity to really see where all of those bits that we need to highlight are so once that's done we're going to use the dark Prussian blue and we're going to use an Ariane rod blue as well so that's just uh, a little blob of each as well so the Ariane rod blue is from the scale 75 and as you can see I'm just using my mixing brush and I'm just mixing these colors together and then we're just going to clean that off and then try again and what we're going to do is doing the exact same thing using this now as a nice highlighted color and this has got a nice little bit of water in there so it's nice and thin so this is going to blend into the miniature in a really really nice even fashion like i was saying earlier and we're going to do the same thing we're just going to pick out all of those folds just like so and it's a nice simple style nice simple easy way to paint but it's very very rewarding because as we build these textures and build these layers up you can really see the sort of highlights the colors and we're starting to get that blue tone really popping on the model as well just like so the cool thing is you can be really controlled about where you want these sort of highlights to be and you can paint all of these folds um, and you can sort of push these contrast and push these highlights as far as you want and by using these nice uh, thin down uh, layers you can really see that it's blending into the model quite nicely so once that's done then we're going to use the Ariane Rod Blue on its own. So we're going to use this now as the highlight texture. So we're going to use this as the highlight tone. And again just mixing this with a nice uh, bit of water so that we get a nice thin down paint. And again we're just going to focus on those uh, sort of raised areas and those raised parts of the folded bits of the model. And again we start to pick out all of those highlighted bits giving us that uh, extreme sort of contrast between the dark black dark blue areas in those creases and then right the way up to these highlights ready set go and just focus in this just around those folds you can see just across the arm here where we are picking out those folds and picking out those creases and it's really starting to have an effect on this contrast here we go just like so and once that's done then we're going to pick a very very extreme highlight so i'm using an, a math blue for this one again this is from scale 75 um, but you could sort of tone up to like an electric blue from the uh, vallejo game color range that would work equally as well uh, they're very similar paints and again just by mixing a nice amount of water into this this is going to blend down and become a nice highlight color this does take to the model really well it looks a lot brighter on the model at first than uh, what it actually dries down to to, uh, because the paint is quite nice and thin and that's the good thing with the scale 75 paints is that they um, are very very easy to thin so this gives us the opportunity to really sort of pick out these highlights but not lose the sort of main color main tone and that contrast and darker areas of the model it gives you a good opportunity to build up those layers as I say so you don't end up just placing one big thick blob of a color that's way too bright and then you think oh I've messed this up instead it gives you uh, a great uh, opportunity to sort of build through those layers and to create this nice um, equal even sort of uh, highlight that creates a nice uh, smooth transition on the model and as you can see I'm just trying to pick out all of those bits of creases and just giving you an idea as to how the brushwork goes and it's kind of just like sketching um, on a, a sketch pad but just using the very tip of the brush to kind of sketch out these uh, highlighted points so once the coat is done we're then going to use a skeleton bone because we've done all of the blue now we're going to pick out all of those sort of creamy textures and whitish textures so i'm using a skeleton bone first this is a great base color to use uh, from the army painter this is a great way to sort of base your cream colors and your cream tones so we're just going to now paint this across the uh, the arm parts of the um, the jacket we're also going to paint the hands so the gloves and we're going to paint up and around the sort of furry area of the jacket as well so I'm just going to try to be careful now not to get this on any of the blue that we painted for the jacket because we've spent all this time painting that blue we don't want to mess it up now by painting the cream across there as you can see I'm just going to 
pull across just the furry area, just the, the, this big uh, fluffy part of the back of the jacket, just like so. I'm trying not to get this on the blue, as you can see, I got a little bit there, but that's the beauty of using these thin down paints as well, is you could just add a little bit of water and remove that quite simply, quite easily as well. So don't worry, don't panic if you make a mistake, it's easily fixed, it's not the end of the world. We're also gonna paint the, uh, the belt, uh, with this color as well and there's also a little bit just under his backpack on his back using the same sort of color as well just so that we kind of tie these colors together and get this whole model looking exactly like the character as i say this is a great great tone to sort of base for creams uh, because as you go you can build up to a really really nice color for this one then i'm going to use soft tone so this is a darker tone than the light tone that we used earlier this is a really nice sort of brown tone and this is great for things like cream colors and things like that this will give us a nice contrast and a nice depth to these sort of creamy uh, white sort of areas on the the coat just like so you can really see that this is going to sit in those recess points on the fur just like so and that's going to give us the opportunity to really build that contrast back up just like we did with the coat um, and it's really going to allow these creams to, to look really deep and fancy uh, in such a quick and easy way. So as you can see, I'm just controlling where this goes, just trying to make sure that it doesn't pool in any areas that we don't want it to. And again, by having it on the palette, it's mixed with a very small amount of water, which allows it to manipulate onto the miniature in a nice even fashion as well, just like so. And once all of that's done, then we're going to move on to use Bone White from Vallejo. And this is the first step of using that nice cream tone. So this is going to be the first step of stepping up that cream tone. So first things first, we're going to almost sort of dry brush this Bone White down these sort of... Uh, lines across his arm so as you can see this is just picking out the raised areas there while at the same time leaving the darker brown sort of um, wash that tone that we've put onto the model just sitting in that recess and then we're going to dry brush across the fur and you can already see how quickly and easily this is affecting uh, and, and take into the model and creating this depth of dark brown fur with the light sort of um, creamy sort of tones just sitting across the tops very very simple technique but it looks incredible it looks amazing it's so so simple to do but it's so so good on the model it looks incredible you can see just picking that uh, cream area out and again just down the side here just across those lines across his uh, jacket and we can already see that that's having an effect on the model so as we build these tones and these layers up uh, it's really going to stand out and make the the sort of cream colors pop as well so what we're going to do then is just add a little bit of water so that we're not dry brushing as such and just start to pick out those details across the glove here just like so and again being very very careful and it's cool to leave some of that brown tone underneath as well because that's what's going to give us this depth and give us this uh, sort of cool sort of transition. We're then gonna use Elphic Flesh. So this Elphic Flesh is a great highlight tone and highlight color to that bone white. And we're gonna do the same sort of thing. We're just gonna slowly start to pick out some of those highlights. And we're gonna slowly start to pick out all of those creases and folds in the gloves, just like so. Again, using the very, very tip of the detail brush. And here we go, just picking up where we want the light to be and where we want the highlight to look, just like so. Really, really, really great sort of technique. Great colors that look fantastic. They really do add character uh, to the the color tone of these gloves. And the great thing is, because we're going from like a dark blue into these really nice sort of vibrant sort of blue highlights, then with this creamy sort of tone and these sort of earthy browns, it really ties the model together. Really brings out the character. And you can see just dry brushing just across. The, the hair and the furry sort of part of the jacket just up here again just like so just being very very careful not to get it on the blue you can really see how much of a difference and an effect this is having on the miniature and again just dry brushing down the arm here just like so and just really start to make that cream pop look from there then we're going to use flat earth this is a really nice sort of middle of the road brown and i'm going to use this just across his trousers so there was a few different options that i could see there's a few different kind of khaki tones and things like that for his trousers but i'm opting to go with a nice middle of the road brown a nice earth color nice earthy tone 
and again this is going to tie our colors together this is going to give us a nice option of blues browns um sort of that cream color standing out it's going to give us a real nice contrast between the model as well so you could opt for a khaki color if you wanted to um, that's completely up to you i've just gone with this nice middle of the road color uh, because it's very sort of um rebel kind of colors it looks very sort of star wars -y. it fits into the the sort of character and things like that so i've done a lot of research and referencing online and as i say there's a lot of different sort of slight variations the colors on some of these characters from the star wars universe um so this is why i've opted for this nice sort of middle of the road brown because i think this is going to tie it in to make it look very very uh, cool and unique but also keep it with the canon as well so once we've put the base color of that on, we're gonna use black once more. Now with this black, we're gonna cover all of those areas um, now that we're gonna build up and paint later. So we're gonna build, uh, we're gonna paint the, um, the, the sort of gun holster here just across the side. We're also gonna paint any of the straps here as well because there's a strap around his leg and there's also some straps for his bag as well. We're also gonna paint these two little canisters on the side. And we're going to paint the back, uh, the, the, the backpack, so his bag, all black as well. And I'm also going to paint things like his shoes, uh, the gun. Uh, we're going to base all of these colors now in this black color because we're going to build all of these tones up as we go. But we're going to build, uh, we're going to paint all of these black just so that this ties those colors together. And that gives us a start in point and a start in area as to where we can build these colors and tones up. So as you can see, just painting around the shoes, just getting these nice black color on as well. Nice flat tones so that we can build up into a nice sort of imperial gray and things like that. Just trying to be careful not to get this on any of the areas that we've already painted, especially things like the blue and the cream and things like that where we've actually finished. Doesn't matter so much on the trousers because we can fix that. It's not the end of the world if we make a mistake. But as I said, we're gonna paint the bag as well. Just cover the whole backpack in this color. And as I said earlier, I've been doing a lot of research into colors and tones and styles and all these different things. And this is how I've tried to find the easiest route and the, the coolest route and the, the nicest sort of color tones that suit the character to the best. So yeah, just paint all of the backpack, this sort of metal ring and all these different things, the pipes and the gun and everything, and cover it all in black, as I say, and then we'll build up from there later. Just being careful just around the gloves there, especially around the sort of trigger guard, just like so. There we go, just trying to cover a little bit of the pistol handle there. Excellent, nice. And again, just trying to be careful. There we go, there we go. Fantastic. So once we've done all of our black, then we're gonna move on and we're gonna to start to look at um, paint in some of the other areas. So we're gonna go back to that brown at the moment. We're gonna use the strong tone for this one. So we've gone up in a slight darker variation. So we start with the light tone for his face and then we used the soft tone then for the creams but we're going to use the strong tone now for the browns because this is a nice dark brown earthy sort of wash that's going to really sit in all of those creases and recess points. You can really see it has an effect straight out of the pot. Um, it all already creates that heavy contrast on these trousers and it looks fantastic. It looks absolutely amazing. Again, by using a little bit of water on the palette, this allows me to manipulate it a little bit more, but you might find that when it dries down with a little bit of water in there, it does dry down quite shiny. So be careful with that, um, but it doesn't matter too much to me because I always cover my miniatures in a nice, um, uh, in a nice sort of matte varnish afterwards anyway. So once we've allowed that to dry, we're then gonna go back to that flat earth and then we're gonna slowly build those colors back up. Exactly the same technique and exactly the same style as we used on our jacket earlier. So the same way as we painted the blues on that coat, we're gonna to start to build up all of these um, light sort of tones and browns and pick where we want the light to, to be catching onto the model. So technically I'm gonna paint this more highlighted towards the front of the model and on the front of the trousers rather than so much underneath the, the, the coat here and, and on the back area because we kind of want the light source to be uh, catching on the front, especially with the shadow area of the backpack here. So this just gives us a little bit of control as to where we want our light source to be 
I'm going to try to paint this up, but without painting this into the creases as well. It's a little bit complicated uh, on the trousers because there's so many creases. They've got so much detail. Uh, you just want to try to be careful that you don't end up with the paint falling into those creases. Now, once that's done, we're going to use a beige brown, which is going to be our highlight color. So it's going to create a really nice highlight color onto those trousers and really allow us to control where that light source is. Um, once this is done, you could push this further by adding a little bit of uh, a cream tone, like bone white into it, if you wanted to push uh, your highlights further. Uh, but for the video and for the tutorial, I'm not doing that. I'm just going to push them up to this level, um, just giving you guys a nice, simple, easy uh, to follow video. Just like so. So I'm sorry that I've been absent for a little while. I know I've had a lot of work on and it's been difficult for me to find time to create videos and to, to paint in general. So I do appreciate all of you hanging around and waiting for the videos. And I'm doing the best that I can in terms of trying to paint loads of different subjects and bring in plenty of different things to the channel and different uh, video tutorials. I know my videos are long, um, but I always appreciate uh, you guys uh, watching and enjoying the comments that you guys put in here are fantastic honestly uh, you build me with so much confidence and i know you build others with confidence with that as well so i, I really appreciate uh, all of you sort of watching viewing commenting it, it means the world to me don't forget with this channel that i earn absolutely nothing from this um, i don't get paid from it i don't get ad revenue um, i don't bother with anything like that i literally just enjoy the paint and i enjoy bringing these videos to you guys i like uh, being able to paint these miniatures and show you guys and my friends sort of how i do it and i think it's great to be able to do so without uh, looming um, adverts and payments and all these things over your heads and i think it's really nice to not have to worry about doing it as a job but to just be able to paint uh, just for the fun of it and bring these characters to life in my own little way and in my own time as well so what we're going to do then, once we've done the brown of the trousers, we're going to move on to using German grey. So this is a nice dark, dark grey with a subtle hint of blue. So this is a blue tone grey. And I'm just going to paint this across using all those brush strokes. Um, just going to switch out my brush here because my brush is split a little bit. This is more my uh, mixing brush rather than my actual painting brush. So we're just going to pick out uh, a different brush and then start to pick those details just like so. I like to incorporate these sort of brush strokes and all of these things into the uh, painting and the models because I think it creates a more organic, more authentic, more, re uh, more sort of real look rather than everything being blended into oblivion so i like having all of these different brush strokes and things like that i think it creates a real nice interesting style and an interesting way of painting so yeah we're just going to paint all of these details like i say using the very tip of the brush and as you can see just picking out some of those colors the cool thing we're painting on top of the black then is this gives us a great um sort of dark underlying color so that allows us to build up those layers and those tones in multiple multiple layers so two three four layers to create nice highlights as well giving us a lot more control over our highlighting and there we go you can see i'm just picking out areas where you can see folds and creases in the shoes and in the boots and in the bag just like so i'm also going to paint these tubes in the same color as well just so that, that ties them all together and creates this kind of imperial remnants of the imperial bits and things like that as well once the German grey is dry, we're going to use a dark blue grey. So this is a colour that we used earlier for his hair. And we're just going to mix a little bit of water into this so that we can blend this into the model in a nice even fashion as well. And then we're going to switch to our detail brush, just like so. And then we're going to start to pick out those details and those highlights just the same way as we did with the German grey. This time we're being a little bit more conservative about where we place it. So we're going to place this now a little bit more uh, sort of sparingly and start to pick out some of those highlight points where we want the light to be reflecting and you can really see sort of the technique that I paint and the sort of style and way that I use this at the tip of the brush. That's the good thing with making uh, longer videos rather than just quick short videos is it gives me the opportunity to just allow you guys to watch how I paint uh, which sometimes is really useful uh, because just having a, a snippet saying place this color here uh, might not give you guys sort of the, the insight into how to place it or how it works or things like that. So I like to really take my time, make long videos, uh, show you guys how the brush strokes go, how the blending works. And I find these sort of things uh, really, really helpful to uh, the channel. And I think that's something that separates the channel apart from others. 
Now, I know the videos are long and I don't expect people to watch the entirety of these videos, um, although I do appreciate every single person um, that tunes in, whether you watch for a minute or whether you watch for the entire thing. Um, but I do like to have these videos with a nice long, long run through because it gives people the option if they want to sit down and just uh, watch along and play along uh, and paint along with me. It shows you right the way through how I've done it rather than just in snippets. And I think that's great. So once that highlight's done, we're going to highlight down with a final highlight of graphite. So this is an AK Interactive paint, um, and this is a really nice light sort of highlight. This is a nice light, light sort of colour, and this will give us the opportunity now to really be extreme on those edge highlights. So again, I'm mixing this with a nice little bit of water so that it gives me control over the brush strokes um, and thin sort of layers. So that allows me then to sort of build the layers up as I would like. And you can see now how extreme I'm using now being very extreme on the uh, the very edge, the very tip of the brush. And again, using those brush strokes to kind of add that sort of um, kind of scratchy effect, that kind of real world kind of effect, creates this really nice sort of texture and tone onto the model as well. There we go, you can really see this sort of tone this highlight now having a real real effect on that contrast bring in from us having that really dark black base color right up to this really really nice sort of graphite this light bluish gray sort of tone and it's giving us a real nice uh, contrast and bring in that bag to life so you can see just by using three colors uh, or three highlights how much we've gone from that black tone right up to this extreme highlight and this extreme color that's really bringing this bag to life just like so there we go again just picking out the very extreme edges so using as much of the extreme edge of the brush as i possibly can just to kind of catch where i think the light will be catching on the bag just like so, that's fantastic. And now we've got a real good contrast there. You do the same thing with the belt buckle and uh, the shoes and things like that if you want, and just see how far you could push the um, the contrast. I was just showing you on the bag because it gives you a real nice, uh, quick and easy way of uh, seeing how I highlight. From there then, I'm going to use a plate mail metal from the Army Painter. This is a really nice, shiny sort of silver color. And I'm just gonna use this to dry brush now across the backpack, across the metal area, across the back here. So it just shows uh, almost like this color is a black tone and some of the paint has chipped and worn off and just created a chipped effect just around this bag area here. And then it's picking out those areas around the metal piping and things like that. There we go, you can really see that this chipped out and worn out effect is really looking great. And I'm also just gonna dry brush this the same way, just across the gun. And it's a really, really, really quick, simple way of painting the gun. As you can see, we painted it black and we've dry brushed it silver. It could not get any easier than that. And all in all, once everything is done, that is Cassian and or complete. So as I said, if you watched right the way through, that will give you a full list and a full comprehensive way of seeing how I've painted this model. Um, if you've watched right the way through from start to finish, I really appreciate all of your time. Thank you so, so much. Um, I know it's a long one, but I love long videos. You should know this by now. Thank you, as always, guys, for tuning in, for watching, for your comments, for your positivity. Let me know, please, in the comment section what you think of this painting. If you've enjoyed it if you think the blue is great if you like the way that i've highlighted the bag if you like the simplistic sort of gun of just black and dry brush metal um yeah let me know what you think of the overall video um, as always thank you so much for tuning in as always please take care of yourselves my friends um, i will see you guys on the next one and hopefully i will have some more really cool models for you very very soon take care my friends um, look after each other and i will see you soon